Hi. The concept that we're going to talk about for this module is in Chapter 11 and Chapter 12 of McConnell's macro split, and that's the Keynesian multiplier and the MPC, or the marginal propensity to consume. The MPC, the marginal propensity to consume, is defined as the change in consumption that we see happening as income changes in the economy. An increase in income is almost always associated with an increase in consumption, and so we expect this number to be positive. It's not necessarily going to be the same for every individual. For example, you might be a relatively poor college student, say, where you've got a part-time job, you're working hard, you're going to school full-time. If I give you an extra $1,000, if I made your income go up by $1,000, you're probably going to spend all of it. And in that particular case, a rise in income of 1000 would cause a rise in your consumption by 1000 and your marginal propensity to consume would be 1. Another person, say someone in their 60s or 70s who's retired, gone through, you know, their, their working life, they've got a good bit of money put by, they might not consume all of any increase in income that they got. Their increase in income of, of $1,000 might cause a very different reaction in their consumption. They might put some of it away and they might splurge on some of it. Maybe they'd only spend, consume, $500 of it. Their marginal propensity to consume would only be 0.5. So, that's the basic concept of what the MPC, the marginal propensity to consume, is. And it's connected to a really important idea in the Keynesian model called the multiplier. The multiplier is equal to 1 minus the MPC, 1 divided by 1 minus the MPC. And I want to talk about what it means and how it works over here in this example. Okay? I'm going to assign some numbers here and go through an example so you can see what we mean when we talk about the Keynesian multiplier, what it multiplies, and how it works. In my example, we're going to talk about the MPC as being 0.8. That's not as big as one, which college students will often have, and not quite as small as that retired folks, those retired folks I talked about a minute ago, who had an MPC of 0.5. The other concept that's associated with this is the marginal propensity to save. In my example, it's going to be 0.2. And this is defined as the amount of savings you do as your income goes up. So we have these two concepts paired, the marginal propensity to consume and the marginal propensity to save. Now let's imagine an example where in your particular community there's going to be a new project that's started by your local government and there's going to be a $10 million spending increase that happens. It can be for anything, but for our example, let's suppose it's for roads. Your community has long hoped for a new road to come by to, to help traffic problems out and they've gotten it and $10 million is going to be spent. Now here's how the multiplier works. This $10 million is going to go into the community by turning into income for someone else. There are going to be a number of construction companies that are going to get jobs in this area in order to actually build these roads. So workers, construction workers in particular, are going to see an increase in their income. And $10 million starts to feed its way out into the pockets of all these folks. They're going to spend some of it, and they're going to save some of it. The marginal propensity to consume tells me how much they're going to spend, and the marginal propensity to save will tell me how much they'll save. So out of this $10 million, as it feeds its way into the community, we're going to see an increase in consumption of 0.8 of that. That's 8 million of the 10. And we'll see an increase in savings of the rest. These folks, on average, will save $2 million. So already there's been this multiplied little bit of spending that's happened. There's a ripple that this caused by that increase in, in consumption. Now, that didn't stop there, though. When these people are spending their $8 million, that's going to have another ripple. These road workers, these construction workers who have spent this money now, they've maybe bought a second-hand car. Maybe they've taken a vacation. Maybe they've decided that it's time to put the new roof on the house. A whole other group of people, another ripple, are going to also receive an increase in income. The car salesmen, the folks who help book the vacation, the people who put the roof on, 
they'll see an increase in income too. And they're going to spend part of it and they're going to save part of it. So this consumption turns into an increase in income for someone else. And that increase in income of $8 million will also get spent and saved. That increase in consumption in that next round is going to be 0.8 of that or $6.4 million. And we can continue on and on and on. That original $10 million of spending that the government did turned into income for the road workers and they spent some of it. That spending turns into income for someone else. They spend some of it and the ripple effects keep going on and on and on. The multiplier helps us add up all those ripple effects. The original $10 million, the next stage of spending in the $8 million, the stage after that in the $6.4 million. The multiplier tells us, if we substitute in the numbers that we've been using here, that the final change in spending is going to be equal to the multiplier times that original change. The multiplier in my example here is 1 divided by 1 minus the NPC. That's 0.8. So that's 1 over 0.2, 1 over 2 tenths, which turns out to be 5. This $10 million of original spending is going to end up causing a multiplied increase in total spending by 5 times that amount. So the final impact when we add up the 10 and the 8 and the 6.4, and if we kept going and calculating all the ripples over and over and over again, we would see a final change of 10 times 5, or a total of $50 million worth of multiplied spending in the economy as a whole. Okay? So the multiplier itself is connected to this idea of the marginal propensity to consume in this sort of way.